right. Um, well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for this webinar, which we will be discussing the Moja Loop training program and giving an overview and going into some detail about what the training program is, uh, what it looks like, and telling you a little bit more about how you can pa participate. Um, my name is Simeon Oriko. I'm the community manager at the Moja Loop Foundation. I'm joined on this uh, webinar by Jane Strogan and Paul Baker from Modus Box. Um, and we also have with us uh, Paula Hunter, the executive director for the Moja Loop Foundation. I'll quickly pass it over to Paula for some introductory thoughts and then we can get started. Paula. Thank you, Simeon. Uh, and thank you to all of you that have uh, joined us today for this uh, training program overview. Um, we, we've just recently come off a full week session, a community meeting of the Mojuluk community, uh, where we talked about the, the ongoing development of the Mojuluk platform and the ongoing objectives of the Mojuluk Foundation. And our top priority this year is to increase our traction with the Mojuluk platform. And we'll increase our traction by seeing more deployments of Mojuluk based systems in the field. Uh, but of course, that doesn't happen. Um, by just downloading the code base. There's consulting uh, services often involved in the structure of, of a Mojo Loop system. Uh, and of course, there's technology skills required to implement and operate a Mojo Loop based platform. So, so one of the intents here of this training program is to build up the expertise that's available to the marketplace to sell, implement, and deploy and operate Mojo Loop systems. Um, so long term, what we'd like to be able to do is point to folks like yourselves that have gone through the training program as resources to the marketplace uh, to help uh, central banks and financial service providers uh, deploy and operate their own uh, modulo based, system, based systems. So there's opportunity for you once you, you get through this training program, there's opportunity for you to provide those services to uh, entities that are interested in deploying Mojalu. And, and so you're an important cog in our wheel uh, in, in getting to traction uh, via these various deployments. So um, after you get through this uh, exercise here today, uh, if you have follow-up questions, do feel free to reach out to us. I'm sure there'll be contact information in the slide deck. Um, but again, thank you for joining us today and I'll turn it back to you, Simeon. Thank you so much. So just a few housekeeping. Um, we will be on here for an hour. The session is being recorded. So if you, and we will make the recording available if you request it to, um, anyone. So please be aware that we are recording the session. And then secondly, um, at any point, feel free to put your questions in the chat, but um, we will leave some time at the tail end of this webinar for question and answers. So do keep that in mind. Um, we will kick things off. Um, I will, here is our agenda. We've essentially part through the welcome and introduction. Um, perhaps I can um, allow Jane and Paul to introduce themselves. Uh, Jane, why don't you go first? Thanks, Simeon. Um, good afternoon, evening, morning, everyone. My name is Jane Strucken. I know some of you. I don't know many of you. Welcome, and I'm delighted that you're here with us. Awesome. Paul? Sorry, just trying to find my unmute button. <laughs> Uh, yes, hi. Uh, my name is Paul Baker. I'm from Modus Box. I'm the engineering manager there, and I've been very involved in putting this program together, and I hope that you enjoy it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jane. Thanks so much, Paul. Um, through this webinar, we'll provide you some context and background um, of the Mojo Loop training program, give you a little bit of history and where we've come from and, uh, and where we are at right now. Um, we also do want to give you um, a deep dive of the Moodle training program, tell you what's, what it encompasses and walk you through a demo. And we'd also like to show you how, tell you how to, you can get involved, um, present to you our community involvement framework so that right after this call, you can directly jump in and help us in building and in, uh, in building the Moodle training program going forward. And then after that, we will leave some time for some question and answers. So I'll pass it over to uh, Jane, to give us some context and background. Jane? Thanks so much, Simeon. Uh, can you go to the next slide? 
Um, as as you, I think you can all realize, we are really delighted that you've all joined us um, and shown so much interest in our training program. Thank you for doing that. And we hope, all of us collectively hope, that you will become as passionate about this program as we are. We rely on your passion, we rely on your involvement, and we are really keen to have your input into the future of the program. Um, the, the program evolved out of a need uh, that was identified through the, the starting of implementations and conversations with customers and an acknowledgement that there is a gap, as Paula mentioned early, in um, technical knowledge, um, operating knowledge, various types of information and, and skills that are required to be involved in um, a switch and a hub and all the peripheral things that go with it. Um, the program started with Modusbox giving in-person sessions from PowerPoint presentations and slides that we developed um, with a, a number of our SMEs um, and those were in person. And then of course, in person became difficult. So they started being done over conference calls with um, Zoom, et cetera. And that was fine and it worked well. And there were some that were more successful than others because the, the situation was difficult. It needed to become more scalable. It, it needed to be more accessible without um, being reliant on individual SMEs. And that's where the Mojolib Foundation stepped in. They recognized that need and the value of the content and that its rightful place is as part of the Mojolib Foundation partner program, which is part of its future vision. And um, if you can move to the next slide, please, Samia. Thank you. So where we currently are is we have a digital learning organization that is assisting us to convert the content that exists in those PowerPoint slides and presentations into e-learning material that's available online and it's accessible to all. Um, we're, I'm hoping that a number of people on the call now have already signed up and participated and completed some of the courses there is a function to give feedback and we would really appreciate that feedback. But if you have feedback for us today on your experience or questions around it or input around it, we would love to hear from you in the Q&A session. That's going to be the thing that helps us mature this into, into something of real value. Um, this successful partnership that we've got with the, the organization, the digital learning organization, has already resulted in the four major courses, 101, 102, 103, and 104 being launched. And today, hot off the press, just er a little bit earlier, we released DFSP 101, which is fabulous. I mean, it's really exciting. We, Paul and I get so excited. It's, it's, we have our own little party on the side. <laughs> um, so that's hot off the press and, and just such good timing because there are so many DFSPs that are starting to want to get involved. Next slide, please. So this is the, the, the future that we envisage, or part of the future actually, not the whole future, for the, for the training program. And these are all the courses that are currently penned in some way. Some of them are in the e-learning system. Some of them are about to be launched into the e-learning system. Some of them are written partly, some of them are a bit messy, some of them are still in conception. And that's where we would like your involvement. We would like to have input from you because we acknowledge that there is a lot of content that we still haven't even thought about. There's content that is there, but needs help from people with different experiences to, to um, improve it and expand it and develop it into content that can be put onto the online platform. And um, you, are, you are really our resource of, of most value at the, at the, from now on in terms of developing the content. Next slide, please. And, and my last um, few words are, are why you and why now? 
you because you're involved you've you've joined you're interested in merge loop you're interested in the level one project and its principles you're interested in being part of a community that's making a difference in the world that's why you're here um because you are interested and that's why we we would like you to take that interest and and bring it into the project the world is changing around us it's changing fast and payments is no exception to that that change in fact it's leading change in a lot of places and merger loop and the merger loop training program in particular is here to help you become a winner in that digital payments world. And we're asking you to come on the journey with us to help us make it better, help us make the world better and help us lead this revolution in terms of payments. And, and that's all from me. And I'm gonna hand you over now to Paul who's going to um, give us a demo and take you through the content in the program. Great, thank you, Jane. Good introduction. Uh, next slide, please. So before I jumped into the demo, I thought it might make sense to just show you um, my vision of what Mojo Loop is. And for starters, the first thing it is, is it's a dream being realized. Uh, so the dream is financial inclusion. Uh, the level one project is the plan to get there. And Mojo Loop is a real implementation of that. Uh, it's what they call uh, a, a level one project aligned reference site. And uh, so what does that mean? Um, to be level one principle aligned, it means removing the inefficiencies out the system. So we're talking about uh, reorganizing the way some of those flows work, where we're talking about building uh, hardware that's scalable. We are talking about operational systems that run efficiently. efficiently. We talk about business, uh, business operations. So liquidity uh, and make sure that your liquidity capital is efficiently used. And then on top of that, um, um, you know, basically, so, so the point is, um, if you have an efficient system and, and it's also designed so that the organizations work together. Sorry, that's my last point. So the organizations and, and how the governance works between organizations and you put all of that together, then you actually end up with something that's future proof and, and, um, and is good now and has low cost. And that just makes good business sense. And, and that's part of what we're trying to do in this program is to show you that not only do we achieve financial inclusions, which is amazing, um, and it's going to change the world, but we do it in a way that um, makes good business sense. Uh, my third point is the brilliance of Mojo Loop is in the details. Um, and so to, uh, it's in the subtle ways that things can happen and, and like push only payments or, uh, or the way that, that payments uh, are initiated. It's in this and and that and how the security parts fit together um, to to create a uh, to have a distributed security model in a way that you have control of your own exposure. It's those subtle details uh, that really make up the brilliance of Mojo Loop. So to do that, we've got to explain that well, and that is really at the heart of what the point of this program is all about. And then. A uh, Mojo Loop is about collaboration. There are places where we're going to compete, but it's not at Mojo Loop. Mojo Loop is about a community getting together to build a tool that can be successful and extensible. And, and, and really to do that well, we've got to collaborate. So if when you go through this content, it almost feels like we're giving away our business model. We're giving away our secrets. And in fact, that's exactly what we're doing. Because in the spirit of collaboration, we are trying to explain our way of thinking and 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 how real-time payments will a, a, a will run real-time payment network should operate um, and we're doing that because we want people to join the community and move forward with this vision and then the last part of what i want to cover here is uh, i want you to like and even love the training program and how it's been presented here i think it's a valuable resource it's been designed uh, optimized for e-learning 
it, it really it sucks you in. It, it, there's good introductions, uh, difficult topics that are explained one point at a time, and, and it takes you along the story that is just wonderful to consume. And, and we would love that you would use this as a reference site that you can take other people back to and, and we can really use it to help explain the details of Merge Loop and its brunettes. Okay, next slide, please. So um, some of you don't know about Merge Loop, so I'm, I'm going to um, show you briefly what the Merger 101 is all about. This is our, our introductory overview slide. And over here, uh, it's broken up into two parts. The first part really covers what are real-time payments, what we mean by real-time payments. Then again, that level one project and how that becomes that sort of um, blueprint of what good interoperability system should look like for financial inclusion. And then we go into really real-time networks and, and uh, systems and what's the difference between the two and the pros and cons of them. And we deep dive into what Merge Loop really is. And then we start covering the extensive list of use cases. Believe it or not, lots and lots of use cases and, and we don't have the full list yet um, that can be implemented within Merge Loop, which is fantastic. Then the second part of it is really about how organizations should be structured and governed and work together and the responsibilities within the community that are so important to create that sort of healthy business ecosystem. Uh, really, it outlines that, that level of collaboration and how that's going to work. Um, and, and that is also fundamental to, um, to what Mojo Loop is and what the Level 1 project means. Okay. So next, next slide, um, there's two important links here. Um, so for starters, these courses are free and they're hosted on that learn.mojaloop.i. You can, can self-register, uh, um, as you register, you'll automatically be signed up to all the courses and you can just take them. Um, and then the other page there is the mojaloop.io uh, website that really explains um, how the course is put together and, and the value that they're going to provide. Okay, next slide. And I think it's now time for the demo. Could you stop sharing? Thanks, Simeon. Okay. So this is the dashboard of the learn.mojaloop.io site. Uh, and here we can see all the different uh, courses. I, I would like to just emphasize the different audiences for which these courses are set out for. So we, we've designed it so that it makes sense for uh, advisory advocates, business owners, and then down technical, so technical leads, developers, and then we jump into operations, technical operations, business operations, and then even the security specialist. Because as you probably understood up until now, it's really the combination of that whole ecosystem that's really going to make this, this program work. So we, we are um, trying to accommodate everyone here. And then there's different flows here. So the, uh, the Mojo 101 is the overview. And then we've got the Mojo 102, the 103, and the 104. And those really start to take you down that technical path. And then at the high level, we've also got the the, the DFSP 101. So there's two flavors to the coursework. There are DFSP, which stands for Digital Financial Service Provider, which is really on term for participants who are connecting into the scheme. So either bank or mobile money or an MFI or something like that. And, and those, uh, so we have a flavor of courses that speak to the, uh, the important parts that they need to be concerned about. And then similarly, we got the we got the people who are, are building schemes, designing schemes, um, uh, maybe even operating schemes, and and that we call our hub series of courses, uh, which are displayed at the bottom. Now, if we jump, now I'm going to jump into some of the coursework. So, here is our Mojo 101 course, and this is how you go into it. You just um, click and then enter into that content. So, so the course content's designed so that you can jump around in it. And we, we, we've done this on purpose, not because we want you to jump around, but because we want you to use this as a resource afterwards. Um, 
so th that makes my job quite easy so i'm going to jump around uh, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take you through this module in detail so that you can get a sense for how the content's presented and we're hoping that you love it um, so let me just scroll through this uh, uh, this topic in detail. So, so proper e-learning courses uh, content is summarized up front um, uh, and explains to you the, uh, what you expect to be able to get out of doing that particular module. Uh, then here, for example, we show you the different real-time systems that are out there working right now. Um, I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly because we've got a lot of content. Um, so next we tackle the concept of systems versus networks and what we mean by that. So um, a real-time payment system is really one provider of real-time data, but it's only within that one provider. And what Modulup is, is a real-time network, which is about interoperability between these real-time systems. And then I'm scrolling down a bit more. So the key point here is that the difference between a real-time system and a real-time network is that sometimes that line can be blurred, but both of them can be closed. And closed is not a level one principle environment. So the important thing about being closed and open is really about the governance of that scheme. Okay, next I'm gonna jump into um, global reach of real-time payments. So if you look at these numbers here, 2014, 2019, 2020, now there's one year difference there. Real-time systems are taking off. And if we scroll down a little bit further here, uh, we get this nice visual and, and watch the years jump forward. And we can see as more and more countries and more and more organizations are getting involved in real-time payment networks. So the take home from this is it's going to happen. If you're not affected right now, you're going to be. Uh, and really what this coursework is all about is to show you how you can do real-time payment networks responsibly and, and in a way that it's sustainable and in a way that you can end up being on the winning side of that equation. It's definitely going to disrupt the world. It's going to disrupt the market. And if you do it right, you can be a winner. So, and this point comes to what really is re what we mean by real-time payment and, and why it matters. And, and essentially it is the money clears immediately. So once the money is transferred, not only does it happen in real time, the money is there and can be spent immediately. And that is vital for financial inclusion because tying up people's money for long periods of time uh, j just is too costly. Okay, and lastly here, I'm just going to scroll down quickly, is there's, we, we've got a case study and we use UPI in India as a case study. And this is quite exciting because um, I'm going a little bit quickly, but, but essentially this is the first part that, that, that's eye-opening is just the sheer size and adoption of what a real-time payment network can do. Um, the increase in volume of transactions, you know, it, it really is mind-blowing. And if we then uh, look at the diverse use cases that they put together, the number of banks involved, 144, and over 3 million customers. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it just shows you, or it explains where this can lead to. Um, you know, a well-designed system does in fact create that financial inclusion. 
And there's a couple of lessons that, that we can take away from this example. And the one is the alias is the portability. Um, APIs, that APIs is a key element. That, that's sort of the unit of work of software that is a reusable across systems. Um, multiple transaction types. Uh, ease of registration, designed for scale from the outset. This is one of the core cornerstones of Mojiloop as well, is if you, you, you can't design it not to have scale and then expect it to work at scale. You've got to design from scale from the outset. Uh, anticipate stability, instability rather, and iterate and test. So uh, I must say that we've taken these lessons learned as uh, to heart and are uh, the cornerstones within the major loop. Now I'm going to jump quickly to some of the other courses. So we've got our Mojo 102 course. Now this course really covers the Mojo loop API. So essentially that's that unit of work that uh, software offering that is reusable and workable. Um, and we describe it in a huge amount of detail. We go into sequence diagrams, timing, different parties, how they interact with each other, what sort of responses we're supposed to get, and what are the general patterns that you can put together to achieve different use cases. Um, so this course covers all of that, and it shows a whole lot of um, use cases, and, and it shows them in detail using sequence diagrams. So at a high level, I'm just going to I'm just going to go through a static demo here, and and this really starts to illustrate um, the beginnings of the brilliance of Mojo Loop if you're unfamiliar with it. So so really, the, the, the transfer is broken up into three phases: the the discovery phase, the agreement phase, and the transfer phase. Okay, and if we look at why those phases are are so valuable, um, the, the First part is discovery phase means that in real time, we're going to not only look up the end party, we're going to confirm that it is in fact that end party before we even take it a step further. So we know who we're talking to and we validated that whole chain before we start. That's very powerful. Then second, in the agreement phase. Uh, in this phase, what we're doing is we actually checking real numbers here. So amount transfer, and we check right from the DFSP side all the way to the, uh, uh, well, the payer DFSP side all the way to the payee DFSP side. Then in fact, that amount can be, and it is valid to be transferred. So all the checks are done, the KYC checks from both sides. And at this point, we know that a, a transaction can in fact occur. Uh, we also, in addition to that, um, have the possibility of adding fees. So by the time when a person uh, checks um, or commits to this transfer, they in fact know what they're in for. They don't have fees added in afterwards. The fees are added in right at the front as part of the agreement phase and are presented uh, to the, the end user. So this is also done in real time. And then lastly, the commit itself Phase. And this happens using two phases, a two-phase commit, where the funds are reserved up front and then only committed when both parties have, in fact, confirmed that everything is in order and they can proceed. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, let me jump to the next course. So here, uh, this course is our Mojo 103 course. It is our technical overview course. And if you're technical in any way, um, software developer, technical architect, this course is really excited. Don't skip over this one. Um, and what we do here is we break down really how it's been designed. So break down into functional flows, into the microservices, how the microservices services fit together to provide this answer and all the different technologies that work together to provide this ecosystem that is scalable, durable, and, and, and meets the requirements of this level one payment switch. 
Um, just to get you a bit excited about it, I'm going to show you the, the architectural stack. So at this point, we've got high-level architecture, component architecture, microservice components, how it's been designed for scale. And now we introduce the architectural stack overview and how choices are made. And now we introduce Kubernetes. Now Kubernetes, containerized, scalable, automatic deployment system. It's amazing. Um, it's infrastructure's policy. Um, it's scalable. It's got a way of, of rolling out updates while you're live. It's built in. It's got discoverability, so the different microservices know how to find each other and talk to each other. It's got self-healing, so if things go wrong, it corrects itself. It's got built-in security, so you can, within the cluster itself, you can decide the, the security between the com uh, components. And then it's got load balancing on the ingress and egress uh, handlers. And then uh, as part of the operations, it's got a mechanism for managing um, keys, uh, encryption keys, and sharing them to the appropriate uh, microservices. So next on our list is Apache Kafka. I'm not going to get into this in too much detail, but really it's a dis distributed message, message streaming platform. And it's really a very powerful tool and gives that element of scale and distribution and reliability. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing tool. And we even get into some of the details as to why it's actually so good. Um, and next on the list is Helm. And Helm is really the package manager that, that collects and distributes and, and loads up those uh, Docker containers that, that fit into that Kubernetes cluster. And Helm, Helm really is a way of encapsulating how each of those Docker um, containers need to be loaded and deployed inside that Kubernetes. And, and it, you can specify it into a huge amount of detail. And then we've got Rancher, which sits on top of that and provides a dashboard to Kubernetes, but also allows you to scale Kubernetes as policy, uh, which is a really powerful concept. And lastly, I just want to, uh, then we've got uh, Bacona DB clusters. Um, And then we've got the module loop connector or the scheme adapter or the SDK and how that really fits together. Uh, what this tool does is it is it's a neat little open source deployment that allows you to link the old world with the new world. So the synchronous simple calls without really requiring all this heavy security um, then it gets initiated out uh, in a way that uh, then works with Mojuloop with the full-blown security added on and ties all the bits back and then responds back with that synchronous message to the original caller. This really makes your job as a DFSP or participant much simpler. Um, and yeah, and that's it. Um, let me jump to the next course. So. The fourth course that I'm showing you here is the Mojuloop security course. And, and I, I tried to summarize it before, but really the security is all about a, a distribution. So everyone's responsible for the security, but more importantly, you're responsible for your own exposure. And how do we do that? It sounds impossible, but it's not. And, and we've got the overview here. So I'm just going to skip over everything and just show you that overview in summary. Uh, so this is the high level picture. These are the different technology parts that fit together to provide uh, uh, the, the security of Merge Loop. So it starts off with the OAuth, which gives you that um, authentication and authorization control of different endpoints. If you look at the hub, the hub's got white listing that, that then makes sure that it's safe. In fact, this can be deployed in the internet. It's that safe. 
We've got mutual TLS that provides this bi-directional asynchronous encrypted tunnel um, to very specific DFSPs. So um, uh, th that, that ensures that, the, that only the white people do have access and that um, there's, there's privacy concerns around that to make sure that no one can look at the messages. And then we've got JWS. So JWS then um, ensures that um, allows you to check that a message from a particular pay DFSP, so someone else connected to the network, did in fact originate from that, that uh, DFSP. And you can make sure that the message from him was not tampered with. That's a very powerful um, sort of integrity check that, that is possible in the system. And then we've got this ILP fulfillment. Um, so the ILP pro, um, protocol is taken from a cryptocurrency technology and it's really, it, it is a way of encrypting the conditions for each transfer. So the conditions are put together, encrypted, and then presented as this ILP condition to the DFSP, which can then, uh, um, the payer DFSP, which can then agree to those conditions. And then finally, the payee DFSP then authorizes and allows the transaction to be committed by releasing the fulfillment, which is also a cryptographic key. So that becomes your sort of digital deposit slip. And then lastly is the security functional validations that occur in the hub inside Moduloop itself are key. And, and meaning that, um, that if a message comes from a certain player, it is checked to make sure that it is from the right person. You know, if, if, uh, if you're initiating a, pay, um, a transaction and you the payer DFSP, let's make sure it came from the payer DFSP and that that transaction is in the right state to proceed to the next level. That is a key part of the whole security. And together, all of these technologies fit together to make sure that the system is 100% secure. Well, as secure as it can be. It's, it's uh, secure by design. Okay, I'm going to jump through to the next course, uh, which is our DFSP 101 course, the one that's just been released today, uh, part of the press. Um, now, put on your DFSP hat, pretend you're a participant. If you're not, um, this course really is an overview as to the things you should be concerned about if you're considering joining Mojaloop Scheme. Um, I'm going to jump straight to the, um, the discovery phases and here we start to talk about the ALS lookup um, because this is the key part that is going to resolve who, um, uh, who in fact uh, that payee identifier uh, uh, represents. Uh, so, so there's two things that need to be resolved. The first one is which DFSP does it need to go to and the second one is um, is in fact the individual account for that DFSP. Okay, I'm going to skip over this. I think that's not that important. Um, so one thing to consider is portability. Portability, if that is an objective, um, then there are some, some criteria that you need to put in place and, and it explains that in details. And then uh, as part of the discovery phase, that final check against the DFSP that's been looked up, um, information for that particular payee is sent back to the payer so that they can use that information to confirm that in fact they're sending the money to the right person. And, and this really talks about how much of that information they should be shared. So if too little information is shared, that becomes confusing and, and doesn't serve the purpose. Um, and it's explained here. And if, um, so what we really want to achieve is this minimum amount of information. Um, really, that's what we're aiming for. And then we also explain why too much information is bad, because obviously that, uh, that's a violation of, of the um, uh, of privacy of the end user. So that's explained. And then let's jump to the agreement phase. So in the agreement phase, this is as a payee DFSP, you would need to perform all your validation checks, your KRC, KYC limit checks, and so on. Um, and then define those terms, put in taxes and time, and you also define a timeout, and that's a key part. Is the transaction 
has to occur within that time. And if it isn't, it's automatically canceled and the money is released back to the payer. Um, and the, the, those terms are then presented to the payer DFSP. And there is an option to cancel by the payee DFSP if that transaction cannot occur. So the point of this agreement phase is it builds confidence in the system because you get that agreement between both parties before, in fact, you start talking about transferring money. One of the key steps in that is this interledger protocol, which you can think of it as an encrypted um, uh, set of conditions with which the payee DFSP are happy to proceed with the transfer with. So they define those terms and then send it through to the payer DFSP to then confirm that they're happy with those terms. And in that way, there, there's a, a solid agreement between both parties. So that agreement is set up and then sent through by the payee DFSP. And then JWS can be used to verify that in fact the message came from the right person when the payer validates that, those conditions. Now the reason why this agreement phase is so important, and this is one of the key brilliances of Mojuloop, is by separating the phase into those into discovery agreement and, and transfer phase, it really it becomes very flexible for other use cases. So, so um, and 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 it's 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 a really good policy to to have this. Uh, in, in fact, it's a key part of Mojuloop was this non-reputability. In other words, we have proof that everyone agreed to the transaction upfront and the checks are done upfront, and that's really outlined um, outlined here. And lastly, uh, reservation phase. Uh, well, the transfer phase itself, and this happens in those two phases, the reservation phase, the commit phase, and just before the transfer phase starts, and this is very interesting, is the pay, payer, in fact, is not committed at all to send any information. Um, but the payee is. The payee has uh, worked out that everything can, in fact, occur and has set together the, the conditions. And if the payee accepts those conditions, the payee DFSP is in fact committed. So, so the payee commits to the transaction before the transaction even starts. And then the, the payer then gets to choose to accept those conditions or not. And I think that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the deep dive. Was that enough, Simeon? Um, I think that's great. But um, while you're still on that screen, I think it might be useful for people to point out, uh, for you to point out um, how folks can give their feedback. Um, in Absolutely. Yeah, yes. good point there. So let me go to the, from this overview page to the Mojo 101 course. So this is where I went into that course. Just below it is this feedback survey. And, and please come in here and answer the questions. Um, they're quite easy to answer. And be honest, it's anonymous, and you can leave a detailed comment on what you think we should do going forward. We are collating these, and we're going to, uh, Simeon's going to talk to you on how we're going to be building up those work streams so that we can really take these seriously. And in fact, you can get more involved um, than that. Awesome. Thank you so much for highlighting that, Paul. Um, I will wrap up this uh, session, hopefully in the next five minutes, and then we'll open it up to a Q&A. Um, Paul, if you don't mind, I'm going to try and share my screen as well. And um, I do want to give um, a quick overview of how you can get involved in the model of training program um, through what we're building out as a community involvement framework. The, Essentially, the community involvement framework is a fancy language to say the structures and protocols that we have to put in place to guide community participation in the module of training program. Um, and we, for those of you who are not familiar with the module of community and how we work, 
um, a lot of our work is organized in workshops and workshops are essentially made up of people like you with a deep interest in motor loop and with um, and a desire to volunteer their skills and their knowledge to participate and improve the ecosystem. Um, and so with respect to this, we are formally announcing the creation of our, the Motor Loop Training Program Workstream. Um, and in this workstream, we want to focus on two elements. One, uh, governance of the Motor Loop Training Program and uh, contributions. Um, and I'll go into some level of detail in each of the two. The, the Motor Loop Training Program Workstream um, will sort of very broadly speaking, um, exists to achieve two goals. One, to create the define and create protocols for reviewing and updating course content. Uh, Paul has given you a deep dive into some of what that content looks like. And a lot of these are just new. The DFSP 101 is just new. The other four courses, Mojo 101 to 104, were released about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe, at our community convening. Um, and there is more to come we would want your input with your experience and knowledge in reviewing um, this content and making sure that we're able to um, refine it and, and improve it um, as we go along. And the work stream will exist to figure out what that uh, review process looks like. Um, we also do want to govern different kinds of content contributions, just making sure that we are able to create a very high quality program. Um, this work stream is open to, any, to everyone um, and it's a very easy way to uh, begin your journey in uh, participation in the Mojo Loop community and in the Mojo Loop ecosystem. Um, speaking about contributions, we do that we broadly look at three broad kinds of contributions. Um, one, reviewing new and existing content. Um, two, reviewing and acting on feedback received from course participants. From time to time we will take the feedback um, through the feedback forms and surveys at, at the end of each course um, on the module training program uh, platform. Um, and we will be seeing, using that to make any changes or make any recommendations for future courses or um, um, future modules within the module training program. Um, the other thing is we're also hoping to develop new ideas for courses and for programs around the courses. One of the things that we have discussed internally that may be of interest to many of you on this call is the idea of a certification program. Can we eventually grow the module training program and work it out and build a certification program so that those uh, DFSPs or system integrators or other companies who would like to certify or to show their credentials that they're well-versed in module um, can do so through that. Um, the opportunity to build that exists within the training, within the work stream. And this is something that we hope to build um, towards um, in the coming weeks and months. So these are just um, one set of, these are just three examples of uh, contributions with, through which the work stream will be, uh, will be governing and will be managing and creating processes and systems for. But these aren't the only ones. We invite you to uh, send us your ideas or thoughts and ways that we can uh, improve new contributions, uh, add new contributions for, to, for the module training program. The, how do you join the work stream? Um, to join the work stream, please email Amanda on membership at modulip.io and let her know that you would like to join the work stream. Uh, we'll be having regular calls for the work stream. Um, the, it is important for me to note that uh, the work stream will be led by Jane Strucken um, and myself. Um, and we hope to have lots more community members involved, um, not just in the contributions, but also in the governance and the leadership of this work stream uh, going forward. We have set up on our community forums a page where all our conversations, um, minutes of um, our work stream calls, any discussions related to the module training program will be posted. So, and this will be done asynchronously. So at any, at any one point, please feel free to check back on these two links. Um, Community.modulup.io is, uh, is a homepage for our community forums. And through there, you can see the community participation um, across the board. Um, the second link um, is the uh, forum board specifically dedicated to the module of training program. Um, so please feel free to sign up and um, add that to your watch list uh, to receive notifications so that you're up to date with the ongoings of the module of training program and its development going forward. The last 
um, here is um, I do want to encourage you again to sign up um, uh, for the Mojo Loop training program. Please enroll um, and please take the courses. Um, we, we do want to have as many people um, knowledgeable about the full um, stack of the, module, of the full Mojo Loop ecosystem. Um, this is definitely the way for you to do so. Um, and please give us your feedback. Um, uh, please engage with us in terms of um, building out, uh, giving us feedback and, and participating in the web stream. Um, I will open it up. Uh, we have about nine minutes uh, into the Q&A. Um, I will open this up to a few questions and comments. Um, if you do have a question or comment, uh, please feel free to um, unmute and just ask. Uh, Paul, uh, Jane, and myself would be happy to answer them. Um, I also see, I think I see Miller here. Miller, do you have any comments on the training program that perhaps you'd like to weigh in on? If you're there. I, I'm here, thank you. I, you know, I, I think this is a, an inflection point in getting the information out. It's self-study and self-paced material. And I think that's super important because the convenings can perhaps for some feel a little fast paced. And because they are so the convenings can be so focused on present work in process. And we've come such a distance since the beginning of establishing this system that a lot of what led to this point can get lost and not presented during a convening. So I think this is really good material to have together. I went through the 101 training yesterday and I found it was very smooth. Uh, the platform is great. It, it was actually a joy to use the platform. So congratulations to the team for putting that together. I would encourage uh, folks that are interested in the Mojo Loop system to go through uh, the, the 101 or just pick one at random, one of the courses that you think is at your level of understanding and to go through the material. It's definitely uh, a good platform and I can see how this will extend into the other materials over time. So anyway, just a quick congratulations to the team for getting to this point and uh, my endorsement for sure that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, people will, will find this quite enjoyable. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Miller. Um, anyone with any comments or any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Um, I yeah, see a question. Okay. Um, all right, um, I, Parikh, uh, if you can just hold on one second while we, um, Ross has a question in the chat. Do you have any set of common implementation checklists available that would help us in planning for such projects? Paul, do you want to speak to that a bit? Sorry, I didn't actually hear that question. Uh, it's in the chat. Do you have any set of common implementation checklists available that would help us in planning for such projects? Yes, we do, in fact. Um, if you go through those courses, the DFSP 101 course, it, it talks about key decisions. Um, obviously, that um, it can't be a complete checklist because every implementation is specific and has its own problems, but it's certainly at a high level. It uh, talks about the key ones that you need to start thinking about and putting in place um, uh, to reach that end goal. Um, I think it's also worth noting, Ross, that it depends on the perspective you're looking at in order to, to, to plan it. Are you planning on behalf of an organization? Are you looking to set up a hub yourself? So it, 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 th there's lots of that material available. It, it will depend on what perspective you're coming at the project from. Yeah, and certainly um, close on the heels to this DFSP 101 is our Hub 101 course. And, and really speaks to the decisions and that checklist that you need to be putting in place if you're coming from that hub perspective. So we are definitely trying to cover that. Awesome. Um, Ross, uh, where would you find these? Um, Paul just mentioned that in the DFSP 101 course, some of, the, some of that material is highlighted there. Um, I think that would be a good place to check. Um, and watch, I, out for, watch out for the hub 101, which is, is coming in, in the very near future, because that that those overview courses are, are designed at setting the the the, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for, Paul, setting the, 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 the overview score of what is involved and how you would go about from that pers particular perspective. Yeah. Defining the landscape. Coming yeah. soon. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> um, I see two people have muted, Jack and Parik. Uh, Parik, you up first. So um, do you want to make your comment now and then I'll pass it over to Jack? Yeah, cool, cool. So yeah, um, you know, congrats for, you know, launching this. I just signed up for it and uh, I will, over the course of time, go through it. But yeah, just a suggestion. I think we had a chat, but uh, I'm from India and I know the UPI ecosystem more and I understand what you guys are doing. Uh, so the, the comment you made on the, you know, certification program for the DFSPs, uh, you know, something similar to what NPCI is doing. So NPCI in India is kind of a self-regulated organization or a consortium of banks. So one thing you guys or what NPCI is also doing great is they are evangelizing the banks to adopt this ecosystem or they have done that already. So I think uh, through Mojilu or through some, you know, uh, through influence, uh, you guys can also, you know, form such, kind of uh, self-regulated or, uh, I mean, one, one part is through course and then other part is through giving out certain uh, regularity checks or certifications and allowing them to, you know, go through you uh, and follow a certain standard uh, that will allow the whole ecosystem or the country's ecosystem to, you know, be a more specific and standardized. Uh, so, yeah. I think I think that is one suggestion that I can put that which which NP, NPCI is also done in India. So yeah, but yeah. Otherwise, I'll I'll go through it. It's good. Excellent, uh, excellent suggestion, Parik. Um, I think that's that's well noted, and we will definitely be having that good discussion within the work stream as we build out the certification program, as we scope out and figure out how to build out the certification program. Um, Jacques. Um, awesome work, guys. Just to say, um, it's really it's fantastic to see this level of um, this depth of information condensed and made available in a digestible format, especially for non techies uh, like like myself. Just three quick comments. Um, the the USPs or the unique selling points of Mojo Loop. Whenever we're talking to people, uh, we often get asked the question, you know. Why Mojo Loop? What makes it special? What is it? Why is it different from from other platforms that are out there? That would be great to see called out in the training or as a as a as a topic, even um, at, at in some in some part of the the framework of the training. And the um, the other point I wanted to make was there's a work stream that's looking at the at creating demos that can be used um, when we present to regulators or when we talk into DFSPs. If there's a link through to the demos at some stage included in the training, it could it would um, be great to bring it all together. So you have the the actual training material together with the demo uh, click through um, to to give it depth. But otherwise, awesome, awesome work, fantastic, well done. Awesome, thank you so much, Jack. Uh, the comments, well, uh, suggestions, well taken. Um, uh, Dorota, I see your hand is up. Um, I just wanted to make sure that Hub 101, that also includes all the financial aspects in the Hub, like the settlement and the different types of settlements and all that. That's part of, or is this a separate course? No, 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 it will definitely be included in Hub 101. So in Hub 101, it's explained um, the decision around choosing the, the settlement model and uh, that will be in that course called Scheme 101. Um, so, so in, in Hub 101, we really talk about how it's done and, and how you should implement it. I think it's really important to, to clarify that each of the groupings of the courses lead participants through very similar content, but from a different lens. So the, the, the merger one is really all about merger loop as a, as a whole and, very, and there's a lot of very technical stuff. Then the DFSP courses look at similar content, the same type of content, but how do you embrace it and how do you work through it as a DFSP? The hub is particularly the, the hub operations and the hub ownership and from that perspective looking outwards. And then the scheme 101 will be um, and, and is being built at, to look at 
the ownership and, and what are the big decisions and, and views that are required from a scheme perspective in its entirety. So it, each one of those gives a different perspective and the courses are available to everyone. Not You don't have to belong to those to participate in them. Awesome. One point I'd like to make quickly, uh, Jacques, uh, is in that DFSP 101 course that has been released hot off the press, we do have a whole section talking about why as a participant you should care about Moduloo. So we try to cover that, uh, that, that question, but having said that, it's a real, real tricky question to answer and there's more than one answer to it. And certainly over time, our perspective has changed. So yeah. I um, please review that and give us some feedback and, maybe, and, and I'm sure at some time in the future, we'll be tweaking that message as well. Awesome, Paul. Well, do thanks, man. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'll take the last question from Tagai in the chat. There is there any uh, hands-on lab exercise for the technical trainings? Um, at the moment, not within the course, uh, but we have people in our community that we'd be happy to put you in touch with. Um, and there are many tools that the community is also building, including a developer sandbox um, that, and uh, a testing toolkit that uh, that will allow you to see practically um, and hands-on uh, the capabilities of Mojo Loop. So uh, it's a guy, if you want to reach out to me directly, I'm happy to connect you with uh, some of the technical folks in our community who would be happy to walk you through um, any demos or any hands-on uh, lab exercises. Um, um, I'm gonna end it at that. Uh, We're sorry for taking a little, two minutes off your time, but I just wanna end with these uh, action points. Uh, please one, take the courses. Uh, give us feedback and please join the work stream and help us to develop the module training program. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is how you can reach uh, Paul, Jane and myself. Um, the recording will be made available. Um, uh, please reach out if you would like a copy of it and uh, the slides will be made, will be made available too. Um, please, if you have any further questions, uh, please do not feel locked out. Uh, join uh, our community forum. Uh, the links were posted earlier and uh, you can be able to share your questions we'd be more than happy to engage and answer there or set up one-on-one uh, one -on -one calls um, thank you so much everybody for joining us um, have a good rest of your day or night whatever is left of whatever is left of it um, have a good day everyone thanks everyone thank you thank you thanks everyone thanks